Baruch Abba, and welcome to another Torah portion reading. This is the last portion of Numbers, and it is Numbers 33, verse 1, through 36, verse 13, or through the end of the book, if you want to just go by that. It's called Masse, which means Journeys. And it has a lot of names in it, like town names and and that kind of thing. So it's it's going to be a little difficult, but here we go. Numbers chapter 33, verse 1. These are the journeys of the children of Israel who went out of the land of Mitzrayim by their armies under the hand of Moshe and Aaron. Now Moshe wrote down the starting points of the journeys at the command of Yahovah, and these are the journeys according to their starting points. They departed from Ramses in the first month on the fifteenth day of the first month, on the day after Pesach, or Passover. The children of Israel went out with boldness in the sight of all the Egyptians. For the Egyptians were burying all their firstborn, whom Yahovah had killed among them. Also on their gods, Yahovah had executed judgments. Then the children of Israel moved from Ramses and camped at Sukkot. They departed from Sukkot and camped at Etam, which is on the edge of the wilderness. They moved from Etam and turned back to Pihahiro, which is east of Baal Zephon, and they camped near Migdal. They departed from there before Hahiro and passed through the midst of the sea into the wilderness, went three days' journey in the wilderness of Etam, and encamped at Marah. They moved from Marah and came to Elim. At Elim were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees, so they camped there. They moved from Elim and camped by the Red Sea, or the Yom Suf. They moved from the Yom Suf and camped in the wilderness of Sin. They journeyed from the wilderness of Sin and camped at Dafka. They departed from Dafka and camped at Alush. They moved from Alush and camped at Rephidim, where there was no water for the people to drink. They departed from Rephidim and camped in the wilderness of Sinai. They moved from the wilderness of Sinai and camped at Kibroth Hatava. They departed from Kibroth Hatava and camped at Hatzerot. They departed from Hatzerot and camped at Rithma. They departed from Rithma and camped at Ramon Peretz. Let's see. I lost my place. They departed from Ramon Peretz and camped at Libna. They moved from Libna and camped at Risa. Uh, they journeyed from Risa and camped at Kehelata. They went from Kehelata and camped at Mount Shafer. They moved from Mount Shafer and camped at Harada. They moved from Harada and camped at Machelot. They moved from Machelot and camped at Tehath. They departed from Tehath and camped at Tera. They moved from Tera and camped at Mitka. They went from Mitka and camped at Hashmona. They departed from Hashmona and camped at Moserot. They departed from Moserot and camped at B'nai Yakan. They moved from B'nai Yakan and camped at Hor Hagidgad. They went from Hor Hagidgad and camped at Yotbatha. They moved from Yotbatha and camped at Abrona. They departed from Abrona and camped at Etzion Geber. 
They moved from Etzion Geber and camped in the wilderness of Sin, which is Kadesh. They moved from Kadesh and camped at Mount Hor on the boundary of the land of Edom. Then Aaron the priest went up to Mount Hor at the command of Yahovah and died there in the fortieth year after the children of Israel had come out of the land of Mitzrayim on the first of the fifth month. Aharon was 123 years old when he died on Mount Hor. Now the king of Arad, the Canaanite, who dwelt in the Negev and the land of Canaan, heard of the coming of the children of Israel. So they departed from Mount Hor and camped at Zalmona. They departed from Zalmona and camped at Punon. They departed from Punon and camped at Oboth. They departed from Oboth and camped to Ea Abiram at the border of Moab. They departed from Eim and camped at Debon God. They moved from Debon God and camped at Almon Diblathaim. They moved from Almon Diblathaim and camped in the mountains of Abiram before Nebo. They departed from the mountains of Abiram and camped in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho. They camped by the Jordan from Beit Yes Yesimoth as far as Abel Acacia Grove in the plains of Moab. Now Yahweh spoke to Moshe in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you have crossed the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, destroy all their engraved stones, destroy all their molded images, and demolish all their high places. You shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell in it, for I have given you the land to possess. And you shall divide the land by lot as an inheritance among your families. To the larger you shall give a larger inheritance, and to the smaller you shall give a smaller inheritance. There everyone's inheritance shall be whatever falls to him by lot. You shall inherit according to the tribes of your fathers. But if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall be that those whom you may let remain will be irritants in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and they shall harass you in the land where you dwell. Moreover, it shall be that I will do to you as I thought to do to them. Chapter 34 Then Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Command the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land of Canaan, this is the land that shall fall to you as an inheritance, the land of Canaan, to its boundaries. Your southern border shall be from the wilderness of Zin along the border of Edom. Then your southern border shall extend eastward to the end of the Salt Sea, also known today as the Dead Sea. Your border shall turn from the south side of the ascent of a Karabim, continue to Tzin, and be on the south of Kadesh Barnea. Then it shall go to Hazar Adar and continue to Asmon. The border shall turn from Asmon to the brook of Egypt, and it shall end at the sea, or as we know it as the Mediterranean. As for the western border, you shall have the great sea, the Mediterranean, for a border. This shall be your western border. And this shall be your northern border. From the great sea, you shall mark out your line to Mount Hor. From Mount Hor, you shall mark out to the entrance of Hamad. Then the direction of the border shall be toward Zedad. The border shall proceed to Zephron, and it shall end at Hazar Hazar Enon. This shall be your northern border. You shall mark 
out your eastern border from Hatsar Enon to Shifam. The border shall go down from Shifan to Ribla on the east side of Ain. The border shall go down and reach to the eastern side of the Sea of Kinneret, also known to us as the Sea of Galilee. The border shall go down along the Jordan, and it shall end at the Salt Sea, or the Dead Sea. This shall be your land, with its surrounding boundaries. Then Moshe commanded the children of Israel, saying, This is the land which you shall inherit by lot, which Jehovah has commanded to give to the nine tribes and to the half-tribe. For the tribe of the children of Reuben, according to the house of their fathers, and the tribe of the children of Gad, according to the house of their fathers, have received their inheritance, and the half-tribe of Manasseh has received its inheritance. The two tribes and the half-tribe have received their inheritance on the side on this side of the Jordan, at Jericho eastward toward the sunrise. And Yahovah spoke to Moshe, saying, These are the names of the men who shall divide the land among you as an inheritance, Eleazar the priest, and Yehoshua the son of Nun. And you shall take one leader of every tribe to divide the land for the inheritance. These are the names of the men from the tribe of Judah, Caleb the son of Yafuna, from the tribe of the children of Simeon, Shamuel the son of Amihud, from the tribe of Benjamin, Eladad, the son of Chislon, a leader from the tribe of the children of Dan, Buki, the son of Yogli. From the sons of Yosef, a leader from the tribe of the children of Manasseh, Paniel, the son of Ephod, and a leader from the tribe of the children of Ephraim, Camuel, the son of Shiftan. A leader from the tribe of the children of Zebulun, Elitzaphon, the son of Parnach. A leader from the tribe of the children of Isazakar is Paltiel, the son of Azan. A leader from the tribe of the children of Asher, Ahihud, the son of Shlomi, and a leader from the tribe of the children of Naphtali, Pedahel, the son of Amihud. These are the ones Yahovah commanded to divide the inheritance among the children of Israel in the land of Canaan. And Yahovah spoke to Moshe in the plains of Moab by the Jordan, across from Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel that they give the Levites cities to dwell in from the inheritance of their possession, and you shall also give the Levites common land around the cities. They shall have the cities to dwell in, and the common land shall be for their cattle, for their herds, and for all their animals. The common land of the cities which you will give the Levites extend from the wall of the city outward a thousand cubits all around. And you shall measure outside the city on the east side 2,000 cubits, on the south side 2,000 cubits, on the west side 2,000 cubits, and on the north side 2,000 cubits. The city is in the middle. This shall belong to them as common land for the cities. Ve'et, there's an olive in top. Now among the cities which you will give to the Levites, Alephantav, six cities of refuge to which a manslayer may flee. And to these you shall add forty-two cities. So all the cities you will give to the Levites are forty-eight. These you shall give with their common land. And the cities which you will give shall be from the possession of the children of Israel. From the larger you shall give many from the smaller you shall give few. Each shall give some of its cities to the Levites in proportion to the inheritance that each receives. Then Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall appoint cities to be cities of refuge for you, 
that the manslayer who kills any person accidentally may flee there. They shall be cities of refuge for you from the avenger, that the manslayer may not die until he stands before the congregation in judgment. And of the cities which you give, you shall have six cities of refuge. You shall appoint three cities on this side of the Jordan, and three cities you shall appoint in the land of Canaan, which will be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be for the refuge for the children of Israel, for the stranger, and for the sojourner among them, that anyone who kills a person accidentally may flee there. I want to point out these two eleven tiles, which are the same. Verse, what does that say? 16. But if he strikes him with an iron implement so that he dies, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he strikes him with a stone in the hand by which one could die, and he does die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he strikes him with a wooden hand weapon by which one could die, and he does die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. The avenger of blood himself shall put the murderer to death. When he meets him, he shall put him to death. If he pushes him out of hatred or while lying in wait, hurls something at him so that he dies, or in enmity he strikes him with his hand so that he dies. The one who struck him shall surely be put to death. He is a murderer. The avenger of blood shall put the murderer to death when he meets him. However, if he pushes him suddenly without enmity, or throws anything at him without lying in wait, or uses a stone by which a man could die, throwing it at him without seeing him, so that he dies, while he was not his enemy, or seeking his harm, then the congregation shall judge between the manslayer and the avenger of blood, according to these judgments. So the congregation shall deliver the manslayer from the hand of the avenger of blood, and the congregation shall return him to the city of refuge, for he had fled, and he shall remain there until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the holy oil. But if the manslayer at any time goes outside the limits of the city of refuge where he fled, and the avenger of blood finds him outside the limits of his city of refuge, and the avenger of blood kills the manslayer, he shall not be guilty of blood, because he should have remained in his city of refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the manslayer may return to the land of his possession. And these shall be a statute of judgment to you throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Whoever kills a person, the murderer shall be put to death on the testimony of witnesses. But one witness is not sufficient testimony against the person for the death penalty. Moreover, you shall take no ransom for the life of a murderer who is guilty of death, but he shall surely be put to death, and you shall take no ransom for, for him who has fled to his city of refuge, that he may return to dwell in the land before the death of the priest. So you shall not pollute the land where you are, for blood defiles the land, and no atonement can be made for the land, for the blood that is shed on it, except by the blood of him who shed it. Therefore, do not defile the land which you inhabit, in the midst of which I dwell, for I, Yahovah, dwell among the children of Israel. Chapter 36, our last chapter. Now the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilead, the son of Mahir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of the son of, sons of Yosef, came near and spoke before Moshe and before the leaders, the chief fathers of the children of Israel. And they said, Yahweh commanded my Lord to give the land as an inheritance by lot to the children of Israel, 
And my Lord was commanded by Yahovah to give the inheritance of our brother Zalafhad to his daughters. Now if they are married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then their inheritance will be taken from the inheritance of our fathers, and it will be added to the inheritance of the tribe into which they marry. So it will be taken from the lot of our inheritance. And when the jubilee of the children of Israel comes, then their inheritance will be added to the inheritance of the tribe into which they marry. So their inheritance will be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. Then Moshe commanded the children of Israel according to the word of Yahovah, saying, What the tribe of the sons of Yosef speaks is right. This is what Yahovah commands concerning the daughters of Zilophahad, saying, Let them marry whom they think best, but they may marry only within the family of their father's tribe. So the inheritance of the children of Israel shall not change hands from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter who possesses an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be the wife of one of the family of her father's tribe, so that the children of Israel each may possess the inheritance of his fathers. Thus, no inheritance shall change hands from one tribe to another, but every tribe of the children of Israel shall keep its own inheritance. Just as Yahovah commanded Moshe, so did the, the daughters of Zalafhad, for Mala, Tirza, Hogla, Milka, and Noah, the daughters of Zalafhad, were married to the sons of their father's brothers. They were married into the families of the children of Manasseh, the son of Yosef, and their inheritance remained in the tribe of their father's family. These are the commandments and the judgments which Yahovah commanded the children of Israel by the hand of Moshe in the plains of Moab, by the Jordan at Jericho. Hazak, Hazak, the need Hazak. Be strong, be strong, and let us strengthen one another. The Haftor portion for this portion is Jeremiah 2, 4 through 28, and then Jeremiah 3, verse 4, and then Jeremiah 4, verse 1 and 2. Thanks for joining us and next week we will delve into Devarim, also known in English as Deuteronomy. Alright, have a blessed week. Shavua Tov and Lahitra Oat.